I was fortunate enough to be able to start using the lens in February 2021. So, so far I have implanted about 40 lenses in total. Without being biased, I'm actually loving the product because what's not to like about the EMB? It's an excellent lens. We all know the Rainer platform. Uh, we have worked with it for many, many years. I started implanting radar lenses 12, 13 years ago. So now with this introduction of the new technique with the addition of positive spherical aberration, what they have done is they have taken it to the next level. So there's actually nothing to not like about the lens. Well, uh, the question is very good indeed. Um, I did not use monovision as much. When I wanted to correct presbyopic my patients, I used to opt for the right one trifocal lens. So when I started to learn about this new lens, uh, of course, we all know the traditional monovision, the moderate monovision, and the mini monovision. I wasn't too comfortable with using traditional or moderate monovision in my patients. So the approach I have with them is to actually set the emetropic eye, the dominant eye, sorry for emetropia, and the non-dominant eye, I only will do an offset of minus 0.50. So in that way, I'm able to actually study how the lens works by using the spherical aberration. So my target in the non-dominant eye would be approximately minus 5.0. Yes, indeed, it did surprise me so much because the quality of vision that we are obtaining with the lens is excellent. The extended range of vision is very good. The patients do not complain about these photopsias, either positive or negative. And also, I think it's very important to outline that it represents a less out of the pocket expense for the patient. So in conditions, let's say, in my practice, I also perform cataract surgery in keratoconic patients, let's say, or in patients with some sort of macular disease. And in these particular cases, I would, you know, they, they wouldn't be good candidates for trifocal lenses. So what I'm doing is I'm optimizing the EMB. So the range of patients you can actually treat with this new lens, it's a lot wider than the one you usually see in the trifocal lens. Another important point about the lens is that it's quite affordable for patients. Um, there's not much difference between a, a simple monofocal and the EMB, and they gain so much with this new lens that it's not uh, hard to say about well, patients understand the technology and they are willing to pay for it. So that's another good point about the EMB. So patients like other excellent to the new lens. Like I said before, there are no photic, photic phenomena reported, either positive or negative. And it's quite a good surprise because sometimes you know how this lens should perform in far and intermediate vision. But sometimes when you do the minus of set, you actually get patients reading the near chart, year one, year two, it depends, of course, in many, many factors, but the neuroadaptation is so quick that there's no rivalry between three different points, focal points in the eye, which is the case of a trifocal. In this case, you have bilateral rivalry, but that's a condition common to, to the brain to our brain. So the adaptation is excellent. So the management of patients, it's a lot easier by using the ray one EMB because the chair time, it's a lot shorter. And when you consider the time you need to take to explain to the patient the way a trifocal lens would work. And also there are so many practical um, things about 
stuff they actually talk to you about, like riding at night, um, being able to actually read their, their, their phone or their computers with very low light intensity. Actually, um, I have measured the luxometry in all of my patients, and they can actually read year one or year two with 80 laps, which is very low. So that's another feature that I think it's very interesting. They are not losing contrast sensibility, and they are not losing, they are losing the ability to be able to read in low light conditions. Right?